we want to evaluate the given definite integral, which requires integration by parts. Before we consider the definite integral, though, let's determine the antiderivative by considering the indefinite integral of the square of natural log x divided by x cubed dx. Whenever performing integration by parts, if the integrand function contains natural log x, we normally let u equal natural log x, but in this case, notice how we have the square of natural log x, and therefore we'll let u equal the square of natural log x, which also indicates that dv is equal to one divided by x cubed dx. So again, u is equal to the square of natural log x, and dv is equal to one divided by x cubed dx. Let's write that as x to the power of negative three dx. And now we'll determine du by differentiating and v by integrating. Du is equal to the derivative of u times dx, and the derivative of the square of natural log x is equal to two times natural log x to the first, times the derivative of natural log x, which is one divided by x, and then times dx. And now we need to integrate both sides of the equation, dv equals x to the power of negative three dx to determine v. Let's write dv as one dv. The integral of one with respect to v is v, and the integral of x to the power of negative three dx is equal to x to the power of negative two divided by negative two plus c, even though we do leave the plus c off until the very end. Let's write v in the form of negative one divided by two x squared. We can see we have the negative one half, and then we move the x to the power of negative two to the denominator, which changed the sign of the exponent. And now applying the integration by parts formula, the given integral is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. Well, u times v is the square of natural log x times negative one divided by two x squared. Let's write that as negative and then the square of natural log x divided by two x squared. And then we have minus the integral of v du. We'll notice v times du is negative one divided by two x squared times two natural log x times one divided by x dx. Notice the twos simplify to one. We have negative natural log x divided by x cubed dx. And because we have a negative, this will become plus the integral of natural log x divided by x cubed dx. So while this integral is simpler because we have natural log x to the first power, not squared, it is going to require integration by parts again, where we'll let u equal natural log x and dv is one divided by x cubed dx. So again, we have u equals natural log x, and therefore du is equal to one divided by x dx, and dv is equal to one divided by x cubed dx, which again is also x to the power of negative three dx, which we already know from earlier gives us v equals negative one divided by two x squared. So now we'll apply the integration by parts formula again. U times v is equal to natural log x times negative one divided by two x squared. So because the negative, we'll write this as minus natural log x divided by two x squared minus the integral of v du, where v is negative one divided by two x squared and du is one divided by x dx. This gives us negative one divided by two x cubed dx. Because we're subtracting a negative, this becomes plus Let's factor out the one half. And the integrand function is one divided by x cubed, or x to the power of negative three dx. And now we have a much simpler integral. So the final antiderivative 
is the opposite of the square of natural log x divided by 2x squared minus natural log x divided by 2x squared. And then we have plus 1 half times the integral of x to the power of negative 3 dx, which is x to the power of negative 2 divided by negative 2, and then plus c. So again, the final antiderivative is the opposite of the square of natural log x divided by 2x squared minus natural log x divided by 2x squared. And then here we have plus negative 1 fourth x to the power of negative 2 or minus 1 divided by 4x squared and of course plus c. Now that we know the antiderivative or big F of x, we can evaluate the original given definite integral. Remember when evaluating a definite integral, we can leave off the plus c because it would simplify out when we determine big F of b minus big F of a, or in our case, big F of seven minus big F of one. So first we need to determine big F of seven which is the opposite of the square of natural log seven divided by the product of two and the square of seven minus natural log seven divided by the product of two and the square of seven minus one divided by the product of four and the square of seven. So this is big F of seven. And then we have minus big F of one where big F of one is the opposite of the square of natural log one divided by the product of two and the square of one minus natural log one divided by the product of two and the square of one minus one divided by the product of four and the square of one. So again, here we have big F of one. Now we could simplify big F of one because natural log one is zero here and here, but I'll go ahead and leave it in this form. Going to the calculator, Using decimals.com, I first entered the original def integral, which rendered to four decimal places is 0 0.1864. And I also got the same result when entering big F of seven minus big F of one, verifying our work is correct. I hope you found this helpful.